Merry Christmas to you, brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to our morning devotions as we give God thanks and praise this Tuesday morning in the Holy Week of Christmas. Our service begins this morning with the opening hymn, O Come, O Ali Faithful. Welcome back to our morning devotions. Our service begins today on page 33 in our Books of Common Prayer, the opening sentence for Christmas, and continues on the pages following thereafter. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. Page 35. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope, and our joy. Together, the prayer of intent. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer your worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and all glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship be a witness to your peace and saving power, through your Spirit 
May we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. The Jubilati. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph for the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning. It is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, you are made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Psalms for today are Psalms 148, 149, and 150. Psalm 148. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise him, all you angels of his. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, heaven of heavens, and all the waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He made them stand fast forever and ever. He gave them a law which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you see monsters, and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind doing his will, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and winged birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and rulers of the world, young men and maidens, old and young together, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is exalted, his splendor is over earth and heaven, he has raised up strength for his people and praise for all his loyal servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near him, hallelujah. Psalm 149. Hallelujah. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise into the congregation of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in his maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people and adorns the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them be joyful in their beds. Let the praises of God be in their throat and a two-edged sword in their hand to wreak vengeance on all the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their king in chains and their nobles in links of iron to inflict on them the judgment's decree. This is glory for all his faithful people. Hallelujah. Psalm 150. Hallelujah. 
praise God in his holy temple. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for his excellent greatness. Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with lyre and harp. Praise him with timbrel and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading will be taken from Isaiah chapter 25, verses 1 to 9. A reading from the Word of God, written in Isaiah chapter 25, verses 1 to 9. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans form of all, faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of rootless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat, when the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place. You subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up that forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, so that he might save us. This is the Lord from whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the word of Benedictus. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of your servant, David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you, all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins and the tender compassion of our God. The dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning it is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our second reading is taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 41 to 52. Now when every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. 
When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it, assuming that he was in a group of, tra of travelers. Then they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in a temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them, asking questions, and all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Worship His Majesty Unto Jesus Be your glory, power, and praise Majesty Kingdom authority Flow from His throne Unto His own his anthem raise So exalt Lift up on high The name of Jesus Magnify Come glorify Christ Jesus the King Majesty Worship His majesty Jesus who died Now glorified King of all kings Majesty Worship His majesty Unto Jesus be your glory, power, and praise. Majesty, kingdom authority, flow from his throne unto his own, his anthem raise. So exalt. Lift up on high the name of Jesus Magnify, come glorify Christ Jesus the King Majesty, worship His majesty Jesus who died now glorified King of all kings My dear friends in Christ I come to you in the name of God the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen Today my dear friends I would like us to chat on the theme from the mouth of babes because today's scripture, it really inspires me and reminds me that we can explore the importance of children in scripture. So today we are going to discuss and explore just a few of the children who appeared in scripture today. 
because you see it's quite important to understand that as mentioned in proverbs chapter 22 verse 6 which says you must start children off in the way they should go and even when they all are old they will not turn from it and that is not far from the truth as a matter of fact by the time we explore these young persons in scripture and see the impact that they would have had that when we see how they started as young and how they where they went on to become significant persons in the history of our faith first i'd like to discuss david first samuel chapter 17 verses 48 and to 51 where they would have spoken about David and Goliath when the whole army was too afraid to attack the Philistines David as a young man approximately 10 to 15 years old at that point in time he would have used a slingshot to go and defeat Goliath a slingshot and a stone one to the head and that was it for Goliath David will go on, on to become the king the man in whom the created the lineage for the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ David, a man after God's own heart, the author of the Psalms, we will see how important a role he continued to serve. We will continue to see that he himself will become and create a legacy for the pathway of Jesus. Don't you think that's important for a child? To the child to win a war for us? A child to become one of the greatest kings ever recorded in history. A man who was one after God's own heart, David. And we see David because he was faithful. And even though he would have had his moments as an adult, his innocence, his love, but the fact that God personally chose him to be the successor for Saul as king at that young tender age, one who was strong, faithful, and handsome, where his focus was to serve his God. Don't you think that's an amazing trait? You want to know who else is very brave as well? I mentioned in scripture. Daniel. Daniel 1.17 says, It speaks of four men God gave knowledge and understanding and all kinds of literature and learning. Um, these persons here. What kind of wisdom do you think God will give a child? It is said that Daniel was probably eight years old when he stood up to the king and refused to eat the palace food. So some of us may watch our children and I'm not justifying children not eating. But he wanted to eat healthy. To eat in a manner where he treated his body as a temple. Yes. Some people consider it now as a Daniel fast. Plus, or so profound has his influence been. One of the mainstay characters in our scripture today. One of those, once again, who would have created a legacy for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But dear friends in Christ, we ourselves have to know 
that these young men answered the call at a very young age and said yes to Jesus. But we're saying that it's only the men Jesus called, right? Boys. But I want to show another example of somebody we may know. Yeah, somebody that is a little familiar for you all. Who's very important in this Christmas spirit, in the Christmas stories. A young lady who said yes. And her name was Mary. Yes, Mary. She may sound a bit familiar, right? Yes, I'm speaking about Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary, where she in herself would have been as young as 12 years old when she was chosen. Children at those age when she was young, prepared, engaged to an older person, chosen to be married. I know it sounds weird, but it is the case. We see here in Luke chapter 1, beginning at verse 26, sorry, as we get at verse 26, where it says, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town of Galilee, to a virgin pledged to marry a man named Joseph, the descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And it continues to speak of her innocence. She was pure. She was untouched. She was a virgin. And God chose her to be a vessel. And she has been grown to become known as the mother of our Christians, the mother of our faith, the mother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, a highly influential woman who continued and served in her life with the beauty of her, of her love for her son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God loves our children. Dear friends, we cannot escape the, ask the, the importance of the roles of children in our scripture. We cannot escape the importance of shaping the lives of our children in our churches and in our homes and in our societies. We have clear examples here of many persons who chose to say yes to Jesus who chose to say yes when God called them who chose to say yes to God we want to know who else were there, some other persons as well there was, Ma there was Miriam, Moses' older sister Exodus 2 chapter 7 we would have had as well Samuel, a young man dedicated to God who would become a prophet, who would become the one of the prophets in the time of King David himself, after whom many of David's exploits is written. We can look in 1 Samuel for that. This young man, when he was called by God to do God's work, and he was faithful, and he said yes, because the power of God started when he was young. So all of these persons, and we saw them here, we saw them serve God faithfully. But we go back now, because I want to tie back into these lessons. When it spoke about Jesus Christ as a young man, Knowing his purpose to God. A young man who was so focused on getting not only to understand further the knowledge and the ways of the church and the ways of our Lord and Savior, our God, the creator of heaven and earth, but he grew in knowledge and strength and stature. It's easy for us to look and to say that we could want to tell children exactly what to do. 
We want to tell children exactly how to behave. We want to tell children exactly how to think. But what we have to do, and I, as we mentioned it earlier, raise them up into the way of the Lord. And when they are older, we continue to be there for them as support systems. But we allow them to answer the call for themselves so that God can take control of their lives and shape their lives accordingly. The children are willing, caring, selfless. You want to know why? Well, let me give you one more example of that selflessness. The boy with the five fish and the two loaves. Yes, that little boy who ended up that contribution led to the feeding of 5,000. We, we have to understand and open our minds to the endless possibilities that our children can make. And it is in making these decisions, it is in making these, these opportunities for them. We ourselves have to create the opportunity for them so that they can truly and honestly become children of God. And they can take their lives and shape the world properly. But you see, the problem we have, we focus on everything else, but we have a problem when it comes to the church. It is important for them to continue their academic studies. Yes, it is important for their physical attributes with football, cricket, or swimming, all the physical attributes. Yes. These things are important to create an all-rounded person. But we cannot only focus on the mind the, on the body, but not focus on the spirit. We need to have our children in the churches. More importantly, we need to train them at home to understand the word of God from a young and tender age so that when they grow up and they become parents for themselves, they will understand the importance of scripture. They will understand the importance of the presence of God in their lives. And they will understand that God does not create boobies. God does not create bullies. God does not create people who are not going to serve a good purpose. But rather, that God gave us a choice to do right and wrong. And these children learn this. And they will learn where it is and have the support system to understand this in our Holy Scripture. Friends in Christ, do not let God down. The responsibility is yours, the responsibility is mine. The responsibility is all of ours so that we can shape them so that they can make meaningful contributions in our society. Let us serve God with gladness and truth let us serve God and remember the importance of the role of children in every single thing that we do they are not too young let us teach them how to learn about God and to experience God's love first time the Lord be with you. Christ.
let's continue as we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from all evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We remember in our intercessory prayers the Most Reverend Howard Gregory, the Archbishop in the province and the Church of the West Indies. We pray as well for our Bishop, the Right Reverend Claude Bigley, Diocesan Bishop of Trinidad and Tobago. We remember all retired bishops at this time, the, the Right Reverends Calvin, Clive, and Roll, retired bishops. We particularly pray for at this time the Reverend Dr. Anderson Maxwell, parish priest of St. Mary's in Tacarigo. We pray for all members of clergy who support him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. We pray, dear God, that you clothe your ministers with righteousness and let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let us pray. We pray the prayer for our children. Father, we bring our children to you for your blessing. Help us to be sensitive to their needs. Give us wisdom in our care of them, that they may grow up rooted in love, steadfast in faith, strong and courageous in life. Guide us and all of who live, who have the care of children. May we never hinder, but help and encourage them towards independence and maturity and to have a faith in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Prayer for young persons. God, our Father, we pray for our young people growing up in an unstable and confusing world. Show them that your ways give more meaning to life than the ways of the world, and that following you is better than chasing after selfish goals. Help them to take failure not as a measure of their worth, but as a chance for a new start. Give them strength to hold their faith in you and to keep alive their joy in your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The collect for today, for this week. Eternal God, this holy night is radiant with the brilliance of your true light. As you have known the revelation of that light on earth, bring us to see the splendor of your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I would like, before we say the prayer of dedication, to send out some birthday greetings. I would like to say, firstly, happy belated birthday to my Aunt Wilma in Canada. 
her birthday was the 1st of December, I believe. So happy belated birthday to you, Auntie. I and God's richest blessings to you. I like to say happy birthday to some Christmas babies, to Christine Jacob, to Matthew Noel Bowen, and to Carol Oliver Hen. Happy birthday, belated birthday to you all. I like to say happy belated birthday as well, whose birthday was yesterday, to Christine Lucas, to Grace Pamela Brizan, and to James Scipio. Happy belated birthday to you all. We have one birthday today, that is Danielle Unegbu. Happy birthday to you. Tomorrow, please go on. We have Winfred Ramsey. Happy Winfield Ramsey, sorry. Happy birthday to you. On the 29th, we have Kimberly Douglas. We have Marie Charles. We have Iwan Siha, Nelson, and Aggie Phipps celebrating their birthdays on the 29th. On the 30th, we have Alana Tate Clark celebrating her birthday. On the 31st, we have Marlon Ashby Bowen, Shelly Ann Jacob, Tenica John, Matthew Terrell Hernandez, and I'd like to also send happy birthday greetings to my aunt, Vanessa Haynes, who will also be celebrating her birthday on that day. Happy birthday to you all. I'd like to say special wedding anniversary greetings to the Reverend Presbyter Daniel Pontifet Andre and her husband Dominic Andre, who celebrated the anniversaries yesterday. I'd also like to say happy anniversary to Siobhan Stephen Hayes and Troy Hayes. Siobhan Stephen Hayes and Troy Hayes, who also celebrated their birthdays yesterday. Happy anniversary to you both. We like to remember the family of Oscar Morris, who commemorates the first anniversary of his death on the 26th of December. We also like to remember our dear sister, Claire Stout, whose anniversary of death is the 31st of December. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. The Prayer of Dedication Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our parts, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the God of hope fill us all with joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed week, my dear friends in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.